Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to the April edition of Model Railway News. Now a little bit unlike last month, there's actually quite a lot to talk about today. There's quite a few updates on some forthcoming models and there's also been, well, at least one new announcement to talk about. So we're going to jump straight in and once again we're going to be starting with Hornby because it is them that made the new model announcement. So it is a brand new Christmas train set, you can see it here, it's the Coca-Cola train set and it's expected, wait for it, in August. So go figure. So who knows, we might do a Christmas train set review in August, or I might do a more sensible thing and get one uh, closer to Christmas. But either way, if you want an early Christmas present in August, you can pick that up. And uh, anyway, that's what it says on the Hornby website. So whether or not that's true or not, we will have to see. But when August comes, if there's a new Christmas train set, we'll know that was true. But uh, yeah, fair enough. It does look an interesting train set, doesn't it? And uh, it's also quite cool that Hornby have gotten these uh, big brand deals. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now this month's engine shed, which is Hornby's blog, uh, did show quite a lot of cool new stuff. So first and foremost, I think uh, I'm going to just cover the most interesting parts. If you want to see it all, obviously go and check out the blog itself. But first of all, yes, the Ruston shunters. We've got a few more painted samples uh, on display there. Uh, I think here we have some of the first unpainted samples and these are quite good to look at because you can see just how much of the bodywork there is die cast and that's pretty cool because that will give it the weight it needs as such a tiny model. But here we can also see some decorated samples. I think the Queen Anne version is the most impressive so far. The uh, paintwork on there really is impressive, once again considering the size. So those are looking really, really awesome and I can't wait to see what those are like. Also, the new version of the Peckett, the Peckett 060 or the B2, has got a bit of a look in this month as well. Uh, a few more decorated samples shown here. I think my favourite so far of the ones that Hornby have shown is the National Coalboard version. That looks really, really awesome in that blue. So yeah, the Peckett B2s are looking really, really good and I can't wait for those to come out. And there's also been quite a handful of new arrivals at Hornby as well, including the Coronation class in the Crimson Lake, which I know a lot of people have been really looking forward to, and those do look amazing in that Crimson Lake maroon. And there are a few others, by the way, so if you want to check those out, absolutely go for it. The Hornby J36, in fact, all three versions of the Hornby J36 are now in stock, apparently. So you've got the BR version, the LNER version, and finally the NBR version, which is my favourite mod. And if you haven't seen that already, I will put a link up there so that you can check it out. An absolutely wonderful model that. Uh, definitely one of Hornby's best, I would say, of, uh, of the recent years at least. A very interesting new release from Hornby is uh, the Hornby 2019 wagon slash brake van, I think it is. You can see what an unusual looking thing this is, but I really do like it in the Hornby colours. So if you want to pick one of those up, I think in fact they're all out of stock now on Hornby's website, so they obviously have sold really, really well. But if you want to pick one up, I believe some of the retailers do still have those, and I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to. And also, a few more of the Terriers have come into stock now. I think during my last instalment of Model Railway News, the uh, BR Black version, as you can see here, was the only one to have been released at that time. But since then, we've seen the KESR Blue version and also the Southern Green version being released, and they both look really, really lovely. Now, speaking of Terriers, if you haven't seen the Hornby Terrier yet, I will also put my review up there. Blimey, you've got a lot to click on today. Uh, it was quite an interesting model, not too bad, really, given the price. Uh, and overall, I would say I was quite pleased with it. But there is some news with the Rails of Sheffield Terrier, which has come along since my last instalment of Model Railway News. So as you can see, they have released some uh, early images of their first decorated samples of their Terriers, and I have to say they are looking really, really impressive. Just looking at these samples, you can see clear improvements from the Hornby version. So if these samples are anything to go by, uh, then the model should be a really, really promising one. However, obviously, don't forget that I only paid £81 for my Hornby Terrier, so for the extra 30-odd quid that Rails of Sheffield are going to be charging, you would expect nothing less than a considerable improvement. But if, as I say, these samples are anything to go by, that does at least look as though that's what we're going to be getting. There's a lot more metalwork in terms of the detail. You can see there just on these images, there's an awful lot more metalwork. There seems to be a great deal more accuracy between the two different versions. As you can see, this version here has got the extra pipework on there. As Of course, I'm not an expert on the prototypes, but it looks as though there's a little bit more to that one. On these samples, at least, there's no sign of any messy glue marks or badly applied details. So if the actual production versions of the model are the same as that, then that's a good thumbs up, isn't it? And also the cabs look to be far superior as well. So in terms of the actual aesthetics of the model, that's looking really, really promising. We haven't seen an awful lot on the performance of these yet, although Rails of Sheffield did uh, put out a video showing one of them running. Um, it's pulling, as you can see, quite a huge train there. So pulling power looks to be pretty good. However, we don't know very much yet about the slow speed and how it handles 
angles, tight curves and intricate point work and that sort of thing. But at the very least, what we've seen does look promising. So I'm really looking forward now to actually seeing those and maybe even getting one to do a proper review. Okay, so a loco last month that uh, quite a lot of people actually, more than I was expecting, showed an interest in was the upcoming Dapol Class 21 slash 29. Uh, last month, I showed you the engineering prototypes and at the time those were unpainted. But since then, Dapol have released, well, they've shown uh, the painted samples of these and here's the BR green one, which I saw on Hattons. And they've also showed, by the way, some painted samples of the Great Western Rail Car, but this time the parcels version, which is quite interesting. Uh, so yeah, a few people I know last uh, month were quite interested in those. So there we go. Uh, they are looking very, very good. And I suppose once again, now the, uh, the only thing to wait for now is for them to actually be released and we'll find out what they're like in the flesh. Now, I don't normally talk very much about O-Gage, but I thought I would do today because there's been a bit of a development with the Hattons slash Helgen A3s, and that is that they've uh, showed a few more decorated samples, this time the BR Green version, which does include Flying Scotsman in its current guise. And already shown in previous months, but I will show them here, is, uh, I think this was shown in January, by the way, was the LNER Black and the BR Blue versions, all of which look really, really cool. And I think I've said this before, but to be honest, if there's anything that's going to get you interested in O-Gage, I think it's this, isn't it? They really are looking amazing. Okay, so finally then, not really an update, but just a bit of amusing about Oxford Rail. I've really, really been looking forward to seeing the Bosch Buster version of their railgun. I've uh, only seen the uh, sort of CAD images for those so far, and they do look absolutely exquisite. Now, my pre-order information still says that those are due between March and April for release, and that's with the uh, Dean Goods as well. It seems that the Bosch Buster on its own is not due for quite some months, but... Uh, for the time being, at least at the time of filming, the version with the Dean Goods is still due between March and April. So if that's true, if that is anything to go by, those should be along quite soon. And uh, yeah, I just thought I would share with you how much I'm looking forward to that. Okay, well, that is it. Obviously, there are a few other little bits and bobs that have happened over this month. But if there's anything major that you think I ought to have talked about that I didn't, do let me know down in the comments and I will definitely give that a think for next week or next month rather. But for the time being, that's all I've got to say. Thank you all very, very much for watching. Of course, any feedback back on these model railway news sessions would be much appreciated once again go down into the comment section and of course i do read and reply to every single comment okay cheers then folks thank you for watching have a great week and i will see you very soon with some more videos all right cheers folks